Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint, and welcome to Color Lessons. Today we're painting a small landscape titled Trees at Dusk. For all of our color lessons, I'm using Folk Art's Pure Artist Pigment Paint. It's been specially formulated to be very, very thick so that you can use this for a wide range of painting techniques. We can use it thin down for transparent watercolor effects, or you can use it with a palette knife for really thick, rich impasto work. The 20 colors of Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. And in the set, there is also a great color theory worksheet that is specially coded for you to paint on and reuse if you'd like to. And this is included in the kit with the 20 colors. So this is a great color theory booklet and we also support this with an online video. I'm also using the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Mixing Mat. And this is a great tool to use in place of a palette. It's a reusable silicone mat and it has spaces to put your colors out around the edge of the palette. Part of it is gray so that you can see exactly what value of colors that you're using. Part of it's white so that you can see how transparent a color is. It also has a quick guide for color harmonies as well as a little vocabulary list so that you can keep yourself familiar with color theory terms. This is a great product and I think you'll really enjoy using it. And you can use it over and over and over. It cleans off beautifully and does not stain. For all the color lessons, I'm using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush. These brushes have been designed with a firm bristle synthetic filament. And it is great for canvas painting. It will stand up to lots of abuse. With care and cleaning, these brushes will last you a long, long time. They're perfect for canvas painting, as well as any other kind of fabric painting that you're going to do. I think you're really going to love these Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. They're available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint in a package of seven beautiful brushes. Some of you are concerned that you can't draw. Well, we've got you covered because we're teaching you how to paint, not how to draw. The color lessons come with a package of full color photographs so that you have a complete uh, set of all of the photographs for all of your color lessons paintings. In addition to that, we have full size pattern sheets. So they're uh, printed out for you so you don't have to enlarge anything and you can transfer the designs directly to your canvas. So these also are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm painting on an eight by eight clear primed linen canvas and because it's so small I've added it to a larger piece of wood so that it's held in my easel so it's easier for you all to see. I've transferred my design to my canvas using gray transfer paper. The design can be found in the Let's Paint Color Lessons Kit which is available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. On my palette I have Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments Titanium White, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Dioxazine Purple, Prussian Blue, and Ultramarine Blue. These are not all the colors we're going to be using in today's paintings, but these are the main colors that we're going to use to create our primary mixes for our trees at dusk. Also on my palette, I have a little portion cup and I have put some folk art floating medium in the cup so that I know exactly where it is and it's not uh, spreading around on my palette. The floating medium is going to allow me to have the folk art pure artist pigments move around a little bit more easily and it's also going to make my paint a little bit more transparent. So folk art floating medium is a great tool to have in your arsenal. I'm going to create a couple of color mixtures. I'm going to start by creating a light tan color. So I'm going to move titanium white to a clean spot on my palette and I want you all to get in to best practices and habits. So putting your palette knife on a blue shop towel, folding the shop towel over, wiping your palette knife is a great habit to get into every time you pick up paint or move paint so that you don't contaminate your uh, original puddles of color. Picking up a small amount of yellow ochre. I don't really want very much yellow ochre at all. I'm going to create a light tan color. 
So I'm adding a little yellow to this. And to tone this yellow down, I'm going to add a small amount of burnt umber as well. So cleaning off my palette knife, pick up a small amount of burnt umber and add that in. So now we have a nice warm tan color that's not too yellow and not too brown. Make sure to thoroughly mix your paint together so that you don't end up with color surprises of some unmixed color sneaking onto your canvas. I do want to check this color against my canvas. I'm using a clear primed linen canvas today and it's about an 8x8 eight eight in size. So I want to make sure that this color looks good against the linen and I think that's going to be a perfectly fine color. So I'm going to clean my palette knife off and now I'm going to create a dull purple color. So with my clean palette knife, and that's why I want you to always be in the habit of wiping your palette knife off every time you finish using it before you go to pick up other colors. I'm going to pick up a little bit of dioxazine purple and I'm going to mix that in with my titanium white. And dioxazine purple is a very, very strong color, so add it uh, incrementally to your white because you don't want to turn your entire puddle of white paint into a dark purple color. Clean your palette knife and I'm just going to add a little bit more I want a medium value purple. Still going to add a tiny bit more. Better to keep adding it in small amounts than to add too much. I can always add a little more. If I needed to, quote, take some out, I would have to basically start all over again. A good rule of thumb to remember is to add your darker color to your lighter color if you're mixing any colors together. That's not 100% true all the time, but it's a good rule of thumb. Now, that's a pretty bright purple, and I want to tone that color down. So I'm going to add a little burnt umber to this to make that color less bright, less intense. And add a little bit, mix it in, see what's happening on your palette. Ask yourself, is that dull enough? Is it still too bright? I think it is. I'm going to add more burnt umber. Many times I simply brush mix colors uh, as I'm painting, but today I wanted to go ahead and establish a few basic mixes that I'm going to use throughout my painting. And I want to make sure that all of those colors look good together here on my palette before I start painting. So I think that's a nice toned down purple color. Clean my palette knife off. And now I'm going to make a little bit of a baby blue color. So I'm going to move some white to a clean spot on my mixing mat. And be sure to mix up a nice puddle of paint. Don't try to mix up little tiny... Um, chocolate chip size dabs of paint, go ahead and commit to making a nice puddle of paint. So I'm going to make a blue mixture with titanium white, Prussian blue, and ultramarine blue. Prussian blue is going to give me a very intense uh, baby blue color that has a bit of an aqua uh, look to it. It's got a bit of a green cast to it. And so I don't really want a green baby blue. So I will add a little ultramarine blue to counteract my Prussian blue. And the mixture of the two blues with the white is going to give me a really nice uh, light blue color for my painting. Again, take your time to thoroughly mix your paints together so that you don't end up with the color surprise on your canvas. And notice that as I'm mixing, I'm always pushing my paint back up into a pile. When you push your paint back into a pile, it helps, it gives enough mass of color there, enough paint so that it protects itself from uh, drying out too quickly. If you have a very small puddle of paint or you stretch it out, your paint will begin to dry out on you a little faster than it should. But pushing it back into a puddle will give you plenty of working time with your paint 
and it shouldn't dry too quickly here on your palette. I think that color is still just a little bit lighter than I want it, so I'm going to come back and add just a little bit more Prussian blue, just darkening the color overall. So adding a little more Prussian blue, and I'm going to add a little more ultramarine blue to it as well. So as you're mixing your colors, you just have to play around with them a little bit, but that's part of the fun of creating a painting, is that you are the person who is in control of exactly how the colors look on your canvas. And no two paintings will ever look exactly the same way. Uh, my painting that I'm going to do here on camera today is probably going to look a little different than the one that I painted uh, as a sample, and that's perfectly fine. I'm at, I just added a little ultramarine blue here and I'm mixing that in. Make sure that you mix your paint by mashing with your metal blade palette knife and push that paint back into a puddle. If you try to stir your paint, uh, you're never going to get your paint mixed as well as it should be. Because stirring just doesn't do the job that mashing and pushing it together does. So mash, 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 and push, push, push that back into a puddle. Okay, so I think that's a nice, bright, uh, kind of baby blue color. It's going to look good with my other mixtures that I have here. And I'm going to set my palette knife and my shop towel aside. I'm using a 1-inch Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush. These have a nice... Uh, stiff bristle. It's got a lot of snap and spring to it, and I think it's one of the better brushes for uh, applying paint to a canvas. So I'm now going to dip this brush into some Folk Art floating medium and just fill the brush with the floating medium. That's called dressing the brush. And I want to call your attention to the fact that I hold my paintbrush where my pinky meets my palm, and that's where I put the end of the brush handle and I just grasp it like that so that I can paint loosely with the brush. It makes a big difference to hold your brush like that. And now I'm going to pick up some of my tan color on my brush with the floating medium in there. And we're going to now come onto the canvas and we're going to begin to establish the lighter areas of the sky. So I'm going to do this by applying my paint in nice long strokes starting to the left of my tree and my paints going on pretty opaque and I want my paint to be just a little bit more transparent so I'm going to pick up a little bit more floating medium on my brush and begin now you can see that that's thinning this paint out making it a little bit more translucent which is just what we want. This clear primed linen canvas is a beautiful background and we want to allow some of that to become part of our sky area. So I'm bringing this color, just applying it, as I said, with long light strokes, softening and smoothing it out a little bit, making sure that I'm bringing some of this color inside the transferred line of my design so it's kind of coming into the tree again vertical strokes not doing anything too hard if I'm starting to run out of paint that's okay I'm just gonna stretch this out by applying a little more pressure on the brush These brushes are meant to take um, a good amount of use and abuse. They're a tough brush. They're going to be your workhorse brushes. All right, so I'm carrying this light color down about halfway uh, on the sky area of the painting. And again, just softening out these strokes and smoothing it as I go. Alright, so the light portion of our sky is almost done. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my cream colored paint and I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of titanium white. And here I'm just brush mixing a little 
titanium white into my tan color and right over here to the left of my tree where I want my sky to be the brightest I'm adding a little additional light color with my brush parallel to the surface of the canvas and just softening that color out just a little bit so that we have a brighter area and then the color kind of fades as it moves toward the outside of the canvas. I'm going to wipe my brush on a shop towel and I do that by placing my brush on the towel and then folding the towel over the brush and lightly pulling the brush through the towel. That takes the excess paint off the brush and it grooms the brush back to a nice chisel edge. That's a good habit to be in. I'm going to pick up some of my purple color, my dull purple color that we mixed up, and I'm going to add a little floating medium to that just to make it move and to make it a little bit more transparent. And we're going to begin to apply that right next to the tree trunks and down to the horizon line. Our horizon line in this painting is broken up a little bit and that's okay because we just have a, a suggestion or the illusion of um, a kind of marshy area here. And I'm letting this color come up into the light that we applied earlier. I'm not trying to blend it in. I'm just kind of stroking it on, making the line a little bit broken. I don't want a straight line across. We want to have that line a little bit broken. And I'm going to leave some of the linen canvas showing here and there. And I'm not going to try to fill that in completely solid. Some of it's a little bit more translucent, and that's fine. I'm going to put some in between the trunks of the trees and then carry this over here underneath the tree and up to meet the tan color that we have over here on the right hand side and I think a little bit above the trees I'm brushing that on and I'm just going to wipe the excess color off on my shop towel and I'm going to just stroke over this to softly blend that on either side. And you've got plenty of time to do this. It might take a little effort on your part to keep stroking over what looks like the same area, but you will eventually move some of this purple out into that light tan, creating a soft gradation of color. And then for fun, I'm just going to carry a little bit of this down over in this area. I might need to even pick up a little bit more paint. And I just want to make sure that I've got a little of the purple above the tree, a little on the right side of the tree coming down to meet the purple in the sky. That's basically all that we're going to do to our sky at this point. I'm going to begin to reflect what's in the sky down into uh, the watery area of our painting. So this painting is basically sky and reflection, and there's a little indication of some dry land uh, at the base of our trees. But it's a very uh, impressionistic painting. We're not striving for super realism. All we want is the impression or the illusion of a little bit of reflection at the bottom of our painting. So picking up some floating medium on my brush, mixing that in with some of my dull purple color. I want to make this color uh, a little bit different than what I had in the sky, so I'm adding a little additional dioxazine purple and brush mixing that in and I'm going to dull that down by brush mixing in a little additional burnt umber. So I've just altered my color a little bit so that I'm creating some variety in the painting. And down here uh, I need to reflect what's in the sky down into the water. So I'm going to begin to brush a little bit of this darker color right next to the horizon and just stroke it down into the water. I'm going to let a lot of the linen canvas show through. 
So we're going to add some over here in this area, again, right next to the horizon line and let this trail down. We've got a lot of stuff to put on top of this, so don't think this is the end of what we're doing here, but hold your brush uh, very parallel to the surface of the canvas. You want to paint with the flat surface of your brush and not just the edge of your brush. That's very important to remember. That way we get lots of bold uh, brushwork showing. All right, I'm going to take that same brush mixture of dioxazine purple, my dull purple color, and my burnt umber. Just making a little bit more on my brush. Adding a little bit more floating medium so that it's more transparent. And I'm going to come back up here at the top of my painting in the sky, right next to the trees, and I'm going to begin to stroke a little bit of this stronger purple across. I don't want a straight line of it. You could see that the top edge is a little bit more jagged than I've got here at the bottom. So I'm going to correct that by turning my brush upside down and making sure that the bottom edge of this is also a little bit more ragged. So I just have a little dark color kind of creeping across over there. I'm going to continue that through between the trees and a little bit over here on the right side of the canvas not quite going to the horizon line, but making sure that I have a top edge of this dark area that is not lined up. It's important that you have this kind of movement in your painting so that the viewer has a little bit of, um, there's some interesting things for them to look at. It's not just light and then purple and then purple and then reflected uh, more light at the bottom. You've got some interesting shapes and broken lines of color there. I'm going to wipe my brush thoroughly on my shop towel and I'm going to now pick up some of my tan color and some floating medium. I want a good bit of floating medium in my brush. I did not clean my brush in water and I have not added any water to my paint. Just using a little floating medium and now I'm just going to lighten uh, reflecting what we have in the light areas of the sky down here in my water. Start brushing that on and then letting it fade away. I want to continue over here at the right hand side of the canvas adding a little bit of this light color but it's quite broken up and I can see the linen weave of the canvas um, through my paint. That's important that we're uh, involving the background of our canvas into our painting. So just a little bit more over here, softening that up, and we still have lots of fun things that we're going to be adding on top of this. But a little bit of light, which is reflective of our light that we have in the sky. Now it's reflected down in the water. One thing that I have neglected to do that I need to do before we pause and let everything dry. I need to make sure that I have some color between the tree trunks at the bottom of my canvas so I can put either some light color. Just got to make sure that we get some color down there because what we have above we have to reflect below and I could even add a little bit of some purple down there just to like I said make sure that we have Whatever we have above, we have below. So now I've got some color between my tree trunks, and we now have lots of interesting shapes going on, moving across our canvas. And we need to, at this point, pause and let our canvas dry completely before moving on to the next step. Okay, our painting is dry, and so we can begin to establish a little bit of a land mass here or the illusion of a landmass, I should say. And then we'll begin to add some of our light blue color uh, to the sky and to our marsh. So I'm going to add a little Payne's Gray to my palette. And Payne's Gray is a beautiful, dark, bluish black color. It's a transparent color. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't make your paintings kind of, uh, doesn't knock a hole in your painting like uh, black can do. 
So I'm going to load my brush with some burnt ember, still using the large one inch flat brush. So I've got my burnt ember here and I'm going to add a little Payne's gray to that, making a very, very dark brown color. And we're going to do two things with this right away. We're going to paint tree trunks and a little bit of a land mass. So I am once again using my one inch flat brush that's a Folk Art Select Firm Bristle brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to establish the left side of all three tree trunks. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to reflect those into the water. Same way, I'm only worried about that left hand edge. They do not have to be perfectly straight, nor do they have to be have a clean edge to them. There can be a little bit of a, a little bit of a textured edge to them. And then I'm going to, it's going to be a little awkward because I'm going to reach around and paint the other side of my tree trunks. I just want to use the chisel edge of the brush to establish the right hand side of these trees. And this will be easier for you because you can just quickly and easily flip your canvas over as you're painting. Okay, coming down here and doing the same thing at the reflected tree trunks, establishing the right hand side of the trunks. And make sure that your tree trunks are not all three the same size or the same diameter. And I'm just going to put a little color in the center just to kind of fill that in. There's a little bit of a variation in there that's going to be even better. Doesn't need to be just a solid, dark uh, tree trunk there. Okay, so just that quickly and easily, we have established the trunks of our trees. And now for the illusion of the land mass, again, it is burnt umber and Payne's gray brush mixed together. And I'm going to begin to establish this ground area by sliding my brush along. And if I need to make it wider, I can either pull down a little bit or I can just add pressure as I'm moving the brush along. So we don't want this to be all solid. So you see how I've got, just tapping this along, I've got a little bit of a break in there. I'm going to drop down a little bit more and carry some of this over this way, tapping on the chisel edge and pressing if I want to create a little bit heavier of a line. And I need to make sure that this is reflected where the trunks of the trees are reflected. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible to give the illusion of uh, some land that is not part of the water. So I'm going to wipe that dark brown color out of my brush. And I'm going to put some burnt sienna on my palette. Again, this is the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment paint that I'm using. And this paint has been formulated to have an extended drying time so that you've got plenty of time to work with it. And Burnt Sienna is a wonderful, rich, rusty red color in contrast to Burnt Umber, which is a much browner color. The Burnt Sienna has a nice warm tone to it. We're going to use some Burnt Sienna to add to our land mass to create some variety in the brown colors of the earth. Apply this again using the same technique, setting the brush down or just tapping with the chisel edge. Got a nice strong bit of burnt sienna right in the middle here where our focus of our painting is. I'm going to pick up some more paint and I'm going to add a little bit stronger burnt sienna out here, creating a little interest in the water area. 
things are usually nicer in threes. So I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna right up here. And I think that has established enough of a land mass for our little painting. We're going to pause and let our uh, tree trunks and land mass dry because I don't want the burnt sienna or the burnt umber and Payne's gray mixture to come through and mix in with the lighter colors we're going to lay on there. My land mass is completely dry and I am ready to begin painting the trees. So to my palette, I am going to add some folk art pure artist pigment and the color is sap green but i'm not going to use the sap green exactly as it comes from the bottle i'm going to take part of my sap green move it aside and i want to darken that color with some Payne's gray so i will add some Payne's gray to my sap green and i will mix that together with my palette knife i'm going to add more Payne's gray because i didn't get that as dark as i wanted it And Payne's Gray is a transparent color, so it will take more Payne's Gray than if you were using uh, the pure black. Pure black will turn this uh, green paint solid black very, very quickly. So just adding a little bit of Payne's Gray at a time. I'm just going to add another chunk of Payne's Gray because I do want this to be pretty dark. And I still don't think that's quite as dark as I want this to be because this is a scene that's set at dusk. We don't really have a lot of bright light that is shining through. So we can go pretty dark with this. So add a little more Payne's Gray to my palette. And I'm going to add more to my sap green here to get a really nice, rich, dark color. And I love these paints because the color itself is so intense and rich that you are able to create lots of drama in a painting because your colors are incredibly intense unless you tone them down. So one more shot of Payne's Gray here for extra depth of color. And again, brush mixing would be fine, but I'm just mixing this with a palette knife so that I've got a nice puddle of paint to use. Clean my palette knife off and then set it aside. And for the trees, I'm going to use a number 12 flat brush. I am not dipping my brush into water or floating medium for this because I want my paint to be more solid on the canvas. So I'm loading my brush with my dark green mixture and I'm going to just paint in the trees. But don't paint it in solid like you were filling in the lines in a coloring book. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is to use the corner of our brush and we want to begin to push and scratch using the corner of our brush so that we get an interesting shape to our tree. That is so much more interesting than just flat brush strokes would be. And it also gives a little bit of interest within the shape of the tree so that it's not completely solid dark green. We have some tonal variation within the basic dark green color of the tree. So just keep picking up paint on your brush as you need it. Remember to hold your brush with the handle of the brush in the palm of your hand and grip the brush rather than holding it like a pencil. And think of nicely shaped trees so that you want to concern yourself with how the outside edge of this mass of trees looks. You don't want to paint lollipop trees. Trees that are rounded in shape never look very realistic. So we want a nice mass of trees here with a very interesting outside shape. That's what you want to concentrate on and make sure that that shape looks interesting. It's a green mass, but the outside edge has to have a shape that is pleasing to the eye and not like a giant lollipop. Don't forget 
that we have trees that are reflected into the water or the wet area. So we're going to do the same thing down here, making sure that our trees come down to where the trunks are and that we get an interesting shape along the outside edge of our reflected mass of trees. All right, we are just about finished massing in this green tone, but I want to emphasize that I am not using the flat surface of the brush to stroke this color on. I am using the corner of the brush and bouncing from one corner to the other. I'll show you up here on my little wood block. I am using this corner of the brush and then I will rotate over to the other corner of the brush so that I am getting a nice uneven edge on my trees. It's important to revolve the brush around instead of applying paint like you're stroking it on. So hopefully this little uh, tip will help you make the edges of your trees a little bit more interesting for your viewer. All right, we need to let this green dry, so we're going to pause the video and dry our trees. Okay, our trees are now dry, and I have washed my one inch flat brush, gotten all the color out of it. It's still a little bit damp, and I'm going to dress the brush, which means to pick up some floating medium on the brush and work that into the bristles. And I'm going to pick up some of my initial baby blue color that we mixed up from titanium white plus Prussian blue plus ultramarine blue. So by adding the floating medium to this, I'm making my paint a little bit transparent and a little bit easier to move around. So we're going to add some blue color to our painting. We're going to add a little bit above our horizon line. Just stroke on a little bit. This is probably a little bit more opaque than I want it to be. So I, just from that little initial test there, I know that I want to add some more floating medium to my brush so that my paint is more transparent. And now that I've pointed that out that I thought that was too transparent, when you are painting on yours, if your color doesn't look the way you want it to when you initially apply it to your canvas, stop. Correct whatever the problem is before you continue on with your painting. This painting, this paint is not going to make itself transparent. So I needed to correct that on my brush and I'm going to begin over here now and I'm going to brush some of this blue color on and it's nicely transparent, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm glad that I stopped and took the time to adjust the opacity of my paint and I'm working a little bit more of this on just using vertical strokes. Now that I have this light blue base on there, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use a palette knife to apply some extra blue to my painting. And I am using a trowel shaped palette knife. It's got rounded corners on it and the tip is rounded. It's about two and a half inches long and it's got a very, very flexible blade on it. That's what I like to use. So I'm going to put some paint on the back side of my palette knife and then we're going to apply some strong blue to our painting. So let's, on the palette, I'll show you how I'm loading my palette knife, just scraping up a little bit of paint on it so that you can see that I have paint only on one side of the back of the palette knife. All right, so up here against the dark green of the trees, I think you may be able to see that pretty well, that I have paint just along one edge of the palette knife and nowhere else. So I'm going to put the edge that has the paint on it down on my canvas and I'm going to just pull a little bit along and you could see that I have some of this wonderful uh, blue paint just cling to the canvas and it gives me this nice little trail of light blue color. So I'm going to put a little bit over here on the right hand side of the canvas same way touch the palette knife to the canvas apply a little pressure to make the paint drag off. I need to pick up a little more paint on my palette knife and just touch that down and I get a bit of brighter blue there. So we're going to put some more of this on. It doesn't have to be all over the canvas, but I want to put a little bit here and there 
so that we get some of this great strong color and these little bits of paint where it kind of sputters off at the edge. So I could touch the palette knife down, get a great highlight on there, and just let a little bit of this kind of drag out. And I carried it right across the um, tree trunks there that are in the reflections, breaking that up. I'm going to make it a little bit more solid across there. I can't seem to get the paint right where I want it to. I'm going to come back one more time and try again because I want this to be a solid line of blue to break all the way across those tree trunks. And this is just being stubborn. There we go. Okay, sometimes you have to put forth a little bit more of an effort to, uh, to get what you want. But I did want to break that entire line of the tree trunks down here. And I'm going to come over here and just make this a little bit bigger by pulling down a little bit. Touch the palette knife to the surface and pull down just a little bit to make these a little bit different than what I have going on up there. So that's some nice light blue accent. And we're going to put some highlights on our tree using the palette knife. But I'm also going to use uh, some Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment uh, Yellow Light to lighten up my green. So just put a little bit of that out here on my palette. And I'm also going to put out just a little bit of medium yellow for some variety. And I'm going to use my palette knife to mix some sap green with some yellow light and a little bit of medium yellow just to create a nice bright green color. Don't want it to be too terribly light but I want it to be much lighter than the sap green color that I've started with. Thoroughly mix this together. And I'm wiping off my palette knife and I'm going to load it up just the exact same way I did with the blue, getting the paint just on one edge of the back side of the palette knife. And I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to add a couple of light highlights to my trees. And you don't have to put it all on in one fell swoop. I gave a couple of little uh, kind of stutter strokes here before applying a little pressure or a little bit more paint. Love this, the way that's looking. And I'm going to add a little bit more of both yellows to my green color. Mix that here on the palette. And I'm doing this just to create a little bit more variety. The more that you can add to your painting to make it interesting for the viewer, the better it's going to be. So I've got some even lighter green on just one edge of my palette knife, and I'm going to add a brighter highlight right over here. And I'm going to soften that out just a little bit more, kind of smushing it around. There we go. And that's all of the highlight that I'm going to do on the tree. So some of that's probably going to reflect down here just a little bit so I'm going to add a little bit of a reflected light. If I've got it up here at the top I need to mirror it at the bottom of my painting and we have just a couple of more things to put on here before we're done with this. I'm going to add some of my original toned down purple that we used in our sky. I'm going to load it on my palette knife the same way just on one edge of the back side of the palette knife and I'm going to break across my tree down here with some of that purpley color. And I can come over here and do a little bit stronger of that same color. Just put this on and give a couple of little downward pulls. And I want to tell you that using the palette knife is not difficult, but just like uh, any other artist tool, you're going to need to practice a little bit uh, with your palette knife. And two things left to do. I want to take a little bit of that light blue color on my one inch flat brush, again with the floating medium on there. And I want to add a little bit of light blue uh, here in the sky. So I'm going to come right next to the tree and I'm just going to brush a little bit of this on and I could do it from either direction, from up and down, or turn my brush over and stroke from the bottom up. 
just to create a little bit of a jagged uh, shape of light blue in this area. And I'm going to bring this over here just a little bit closer to the tree. Okay, just like that. Just a little bit of light blue up there because we've got lots of blue in our water. I wanted to have a little bit of blue in the sky. And the last thing I'm going to do is take some of the original light cream color. It's still plenty workable here on my palette. And I'm going to pick up some light color and I'm going to add a little bit of a reflection of that light color down here in the water. And I can stroke that down a little bit and make that a little bit more interesting. Keep your palette knife very flat to the surface of the canvas. And just a little bit here to kind of break up the edge of this tree and into the water. Just like that. Some nice little highlights go on there. And every time you do these, they will be a little bit different. And each time you do a painting like this, you might need to add a little bit of interest somewhere else. So I'm just going to add a little bit of light right up there. I think this is just about all this little painting needs now. So here we have our painting of trees at dusk where we've used our big flat brush to establish our sky area. We added some uh, ground with our uh, flat brush and then added reflections using our brush and palette knife. So all of these techniques work together to create a painting that is intimate and interesting. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint trees at dusk. Next month, we'll be painting the still life titled Endings and Beginnings. Come on, let's paint.